On this week's MetPy Monday, I'll be showing you some of the basics of the X-Array package, which provides labeled n-dimensional arrays with metadata. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Thielen, one of the software development interns at Unidata from this past summer. This week I'll be going over X-Ray. Now X-Ray is a great Python package for working with a kind of multi-dimensional data that is so common in the atmospheric sciences. And depending on your background, there's a couple good ways of looking at what an X-Ray data array or data set is. And don't worry, we'll be going into some examples of how you work with them in Python. But anyway, if you're used to NumPy, it's like a NumPy array, but with label axes, coordinate information, and metadata attached to it. If you're used to pandas, it's like a pandas data frame, but for n-dimensional data rather than tabular data. And if you're used to working with NetCDF, it's like a nice object representation of a NetCDF file in your Python code. So we'll start out by working with some input-output with X-Array. We'll start first by our imports. We're going to import NumPy, date time, siphon, TDS catalog, X-Ray, and with our common abbreviation XR, you'll be seeing a lot of that in our code today, and the NetCDF data store backend for X-Ray. We'll go into more detail about what that's used for later. First example here is just loading in a local NetCDF file. It's as simple as saying xr.opendataset and the path to your file. If we do this, we see that our ds variable becomes our x-ray dataset. We see that this has dimension information at the top, then description of our coordinates, which are associated with our dimensions, but with values themselves, some coordinates that reference our data that are not specifically tied to a dimension, and in future ones you may see coordinates that are dependent upon multiple dimensions that are associated with your data. Also included here are the data variables in this data set. Each of these respective data variables is itself a data array, which we'll go into more detail later. And the data set has attributes along with it. This is a general structure that you'll be seeing for all the data sets we'll be working with today. Another method, you can open up remote files using OpenDAP. So here we format a URL to access some NAM analysis data from NCEI. This one might take a little while because it has to go fetch it remotely, but we'll eventually get our information here. Now it hasn't loaded the data yet. It will load the data once we actually would use this object, but it gives us all of our metadata and information here. So we see there's a lot of different core dimensions because we have a lot of different variables in different dimensions, associated coordinates, and many, many variables here. Yeah, another example is we can use Siphon to get an X-ray data set. If you watched the previous MetPy Monday video on projection magic, you see something very similar to this, where we access Go16 satellite data using a TDS catalog, get our data set from that, say that we are accessing it using OpenDAP, and then opening our data set from the NetCDF object. Now, you don't necessarily always have to start with an X-ray data set from some sort of NetCDF file or NetCDF-like object. You can also create them directly using the constructors in X-Array. An example here is just creating a simple data array for an index. So here we specify to the data array constructor that we have our input data, we give it a name, and specify a dimension name. Similarly, but a little bit more complicated, we can create a data set using the data set constructor. An example here is we're just going to create some fake data for temperature and relative humidity. Give that as in a dictionary in our first argument to the dataset constructor. 
we're calling our first variable temperature, and it's going to be on these three dimensions, isobaric, lat, and long, and we give it our data. Similarly for relative humidity. Then we specify the keyword argument for our coordinates, and each of these are names corresponding to our dimensions, and they each have their own data array with their data, name, dimension, and attributes where we specify the units. Now this could be a lot to go off of to see at once, but this gets you the basic things that you need to construct the data set. More information on this could be available in the X-ray documentation, and I encourage you to go check that out if you wish to learn more about how to construct these objects. So now we can see that we have our data set with our dimensions, our coordinates, and our data variables. To get at the data array corresponding to a coordinate, we can simply specify our name to the data set. And we can see our data here, it, it's, it is itself its own coordinate, and we see the attribute effect Pascal's unit. If we go to temperature, we can see our three-dimensional data representation and the coordinates that belong to it. But there's no attributes yet. So we can add those now by doing the dot adders for the attributes. And since this is a dictionary, we can say units equals our value. And do that for both temperature and relative humidity. Since we'll be since this could be used at a later time. So now if we look at our temperature we see we have our units added. Now, if we wanted to output some X-ray data set that we've been working with to a netcdf file to save for later, we can do that fairly simply using the toNetCDF method. So now, if I look in my files, we now see a fake data.nc file has showed up. So now our next section will be about indexing and selecting data. This is where we really get to some of the power of using X-ray. So to start out, we're going to get some height data, geopotential height isobaric variable from our example file. Now, if you're used to NumPy indexing, you can do that same sort of integer positional indexing with a data array. Here, our first dimension, we're going to take the element 0, and then element negative 1, or the last element. And of course, because this is just the first two, it'll end up leaving and giving us the rest of the other two dimensions, because this is a four-dimensional data array. So you can see this selected our 2D data with latitude and longitude dimensions, and then it ended up selecting what was our first time, and our last level. Another thing that you can do with X-ray is that because it understands labels of its coordinates, we can do label-based positional indexing. So continue with the same pattern where we just use our time and our vertical dimension. We can specify our time as a time string here and the value corresponding to the level we want to access. This is using the dot loc here on the data array. As you can see here, we have our level, 850 millibars, and our time. Now, if we don't necessarily know or don't want to worry about the exact dimension order in our data array, X-ray also supports dimension name indexing. So here we can use the dot .icell method to do integer-based dimension name indexing. Here we're selecting the last element in time and element 14 on isobaric 3. This ended up getting us 300 millibars. And again, our 2D lat by lat and long data. We can also do, similarly, label-based dimension name indexing. So here, we instead specify a latitude of 30 with a time, and we end up getting data that is in the vertical 
and longitude. Still two dimensions here. And again, our coordinate information is all still attached, so we know which values these correspond to. Another feature of this dot cell method is that you can do nearest neighbor search. So if we specify some exact lat lawn that we want, say for instance, Key West Airport, we can get the grid point that's closest to those values. So here now we have a vertical profile of geopotential height at the grid point, 24.5, 278 at our point of, near our point of interest. This dot cell also works on the whole data set. So if you want all variables at that same nearest grid point, we can do this. And now we have all of our data variables in a vertical profile at this point in time. Say, for instance, we didn't want to just get one value across a particular dimension, but we want to get some range of dimension values. So here is just an example. We can use a slice to get a range of times, any, anywhere between the 6th at 0z and the 7th at 0z. And here now we have a, a, a very small little time series of 500 millibar geopotential heights. Now there are a number of options for doing advanced indexing with X-Ray. We don't have the time to go through it here in detail, but I encourage you to check out the X-Ray documentation for how to do various forms of advanced indexing with X-Ray objects that extends upon what you can do in NumPy. For a quick example, we can just say that we want all the heights where our longitude is greater than 270. And so now we get four-dimensional data back, but again, we're limited on longitude because of our condition we specified. Now another great area where X-ray becomes useful is in, doing basic, is in doing arithmetic and various calculations. So in this example, we'll be using first some of our wind data. So just to see what that looks like, we can see here. Now, if we want to use, say, a NumPy universal function to find the wind speed with our two components of the wind, we can just simply use it like we would a NumPy array. But it calculates it nice and quickly, and it gives us back an X-ray with our computation, computed results, and again, our same coordinate data. Another thing we can do is X-ray has various calculations. A quick example here is mean. Here we can specify what dimensions we want it across. We're going to, we want basically to take the mean across time, latitude, and longitude, so we have the mean at each pressure level, the one dimension that's still not in this little sequence here. Once we calculate this, we get this nice average vertical profile. As in another example, we can calculate perturbation temperature on each vertical level by taking our original temperature data and subtract off this mean. Now, you may be thinking that, while well, this is a four-dimensional and this is one-dimensional, how's that going to work? If you're used to NumPy, you'd have to broadcast these to make sure that they line up appropriately with the right axes. But because X-ray data arrays have an understand, have associated coordinate information and dimensions, they can know that, okay, this has isobaric three, that should line up with the isobaric three dimension over here. And the other ones, it should broadcast over naturally. So when we do this calculation, that's exactly what we see. We see our perturbation temperature at each level. And again, I've been referencing a couple times throughout the video, but here is the actual link for you. If you are interested in learning more about X-Ray directly from their documentation, I encourage you to check this out for more details. Lots and lots of things that we didn't have quite have the time or to go into the depth of in our little video, but I encourage you, again, to check this out. As always, there are links in the comments below, and I hope you found this video useful, and we'll see you next time on another MetPy Monday.